Welcome back, guys. Hi. As you know, we have Zeke Smith with us here. And uh, Zeke, we just want to, you know, we talked a little earlier about your experience on Survivor um, and, you know, your time after that. Um, but I do have a quick question for you. How do you think reality shows will move forward now with people being called out for racism and sexism and even homophobia? Yeah, well, I actually hope that moving forward, instances of like overt bigotry or even microaggressions, like identifiable microaggressions can mm -hmm. be like the reasons why people are not allowed to continue on in the show. Like when reality television first started, it was this social experiment. We were just sort of like seeing what happened. But I think now as it's evolved, if you look at competition shows like Survivor or Big Brother, which is, you know, where I'm most well versed, you know, you just see it year after year of these overt instances of racism and of homophobia, mm -hmm. of unwelcome touching. And there's been an unwillingness for the producers to interfere. And like, sometimes it will become part of the story. And then other times yeah. they'll just leave it out. And I, I think neither one is right. Like you need to have it be part of the story to explain what's happening. But I think when someone makes these you know derogatory statements towards marginalized communities the producer needs to step in and say hey that's not okay like it right. shouldn't be on yes. the burden of a person trying to win a million dollars to like have to like be starving be eaten by bugs living in the dirt <laughs> and also like <laughs> dealing yeah. with like external racism homophobia and you know other microaggressions right <laughs> do you feel like um, everything that you experienced and, and, and how you're coming out happened. Do you think if living in this time now um, that you, do you think it would have been handled differently by the show? Um, well, I think, you know, all these years moved on. Like, I don't know that the guy would, would out me. Um, right, and right. I do think that, you know, when he sort of like hinted in interviews that he was going to do it, that they would step in and be like, okay, wait, what's going on? Exactly. Like, yeah. Let's, mm -hmm. you know, I think there would be more like, let's consult with Zeke. Let's figure out what's going on. Right. Um, right. And though, you know, I would like to think in that culture, that's how um, Survivor would have evolved. But, you know, Survivor, everybody at the top level is a straight, white, cisgender guy. Oh, wait, the head of casting is, uh, is a gay, white, cis guy. Um, but, you know, yeah. there was only one woman who was in the sort of like, uh, you know, highest level and mm -hmm. she no longer works for the show and everybody else is like straight white dude who's just been doing survivor out in jungles for you know yeah. the past 20 years right. and i don't know if they are the most super connected because there are not a lot of women on that crew there are very very few people of color other than like local people who are hired to be artisans and security guards but there's just you know it's 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 not the most uh evolved or um understanding group of of producers yeah it's and it's interesting that you say that because i used to work for love and hip-hop and you know that's a predominantly you know people of color mainly black but and and uh latinos latinas and all the producers all the higher ups are like straight white people i mean mona scott is black and uh stephanie gale is black women but everybody else is usually like a straight white man and it's like i i know you don't fully understand this culture and right that's why a lot of times it feels like exploitation you know it's right and i just think there needs to be uh, just like more protections in place like i think in casting we took like 500 multiple choice questions through various like intelligence and psychological evaluation tests like you spend mm -hmm. like hours and hours taking psychological evaluations and being evaluated by different therapists and i think there also needs to be implicit bias testing included yeah. in um the screenings and anyone who like has extreme bias <laughs> towards <laughs> women towards people of color towards lgbt people should be disqualified like yeah, absolutely this, yeah yeah and the same way if you have a medication that you can't take on the island then that's disqualifying um mm. i i also think mm. like you know 40 percent of the people in this country are people of color and like that's definitely not reflected in the casting of most of these shows and yeah. i think that 40 percent should be a minimum like 40 percent or more 
of casts on broad reality shows need to be people of color. That includes The Bachelor. That includes The Bachelorette. Includes they the just finally race. got there. They finally, finally got yeah. to having a Black Bachelor now after having a Black Bachelorette seasons ago. And, you know, I think I would be remiss in not saying, like, they have to blame the networks. Like, they do things, I feel like, on certain reality shows to, you know, for the promos. It's like, shocking thing happens next week. And it, it shouldn't be at the extent of someone's livelihood. And I understand people say, when you sign on to reality TV, you know what you're asking for. But you shouldn't come out of it so emotionally scarred where you feel like you've sacrificed your dignity. And I, right. I think yeah. that that mm -hmm. needs to change. And mm -hmm. I also think that that's not true, that you know what you're signing up for. Exactly. Um, yeah. You do, in theory, know what you're signing up for, but the people who have been producing those reality shows, they know so much more about it than you do. They know mm -hmm. how you're going to, like, how your emotions will be changed in this, like, very heightened circumstance. They have, like, a deep uh, psychological profile on you. And you don't, you don't have all the information yeah. when right. you sign up. You have a very uh, glossy idea of what happened. I mean, I think most people should know if you behave badly, that's going to be shown, but you don't quite understand how you're in a, a weakened, malleable, um, you know, mindset and that the producers know how to use that to get you to do uh, yeah. things that will perpetuate the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Media. Mm. Media. <laughs> Good lord. Um, I, but so also, I want to add: mm -hmm. if this is coming out um, this this week, so Friday of this week, which is June twenty sixth, mm -hmm. um, there is a panel being put together by uh, a bunch of Black Survivor players called Tribes and Tribulations. And oh. um, I know it's as far, I forget the exact time, but if you go to my Twitter, um, I've tweeted out the, the link to, you know, find information about the meeting. And there's also a um, petition you can sign to call on the producers and creators and CBS, everyone involved with Survivor, um, to create a more BIPOC inclusive environment. Wow, so, I love that. Those are things that you want to do. The the Black Survivor community is like, is 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 getting out there and raising awareness and creating some change. I yeah. love it. I love yeah, it. I've noticed that's happening a lot, especially um, now, because like uh, the Chicago drag scene, like the the Black Queens, um, have created a panel as well. And I don't know if you saw recently, uh, one of the queens that was part of uh, the panel basically was outed for her like past racist um like she did like a number slave for you, slave for you where she put like Shea Coulee as the slave and they were like whipping her and this and that it all came out and it was like yeah so like whoa um, yeah oh. her like the bars she would work at her like hosting gigs, like severed ties like that's crazy. It's, yeah. Well, I think what's most interesting about that, and Shay spoke about that, um, and she was just like, it's interesting what I allowed myself to put up with mm. to have a job. She said, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. She said, because I thought it was weird. I didn't feel as comfortable doing it, but I remember just being like, okay, you know, we did it. And she said, afterwards, it was kind of like this feeling of like, all these white people whipping me while they're playing slave for you and I'm the slave. And it was during, wasn't it during Black History or something? It was, it was, it was during Black History Month. Black History Month. What the, what and that's the what heck? they did. Yeah. How did this happen? It yeah. happened, but- How, it's, how it's did multiple people rubber stamp this as a good idea? That yeah. is insane. I, I, I think it's because it this. this was, oh, I don't remember. It was like maybe- It was years ago. Year, yeah, a few years ago, I guess. It, it, was a, it was a long, I mean, it still should have been noticed no matter how long ago it was, but it was a, it was a very time. And I, I think right now, a lot of people of color and, and people who are LGBT, trans, like we're now reflecting and saying, why did we allow ourselves to put up with that at that mm -hmm. point in time? Yeah. Like, why did I allow someone to call me a name or refer to me in a way that I didn't sleep well that night. And you you wondered why your body was at such unrest. And Shay talks about that. Um, definitely go online. They've been having black town hall meetings mm -hmm. uh, to discuss it. And you can definitely go online. She was able to confront her attacker, is what I'm going queen. to call him, mm -hmm. at, 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 confront him live. And she said, do you remember doing that? And they said, yes. Yeah. And I, um, I, I, yeah, there's nowhere to run. It's just like, yeah. you can't deflect, you can't hide. You, it's All you could do is just like, 
I guess like get out of the call, but then right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Action's no, it's, 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 I've been having a lot of conversations with, um, like with, with my, um, my, fr- my bi- BIPOC friends, um, mm-hmm. because I feel like there are a lot of like overlaps with like the experience of being a person of color and the experience of being trans. And one of those that we were talking about the other day was like how exhausting it is to constantly be in a position where you feel like you need to educate people. Um, yes. and that people Jesus. don't take that on themselves. And mm-hmm. I was like, even a couple of weeks ago, I was at uh, a friend's house. We had an outdoor social distance hang to meet his new puppies. Mm-hmm. Um, and his boyfriend was there and his boyfriend didn't know I was trans. And so when I made a comment about being trans, he was like, what? And then sort of like cornered me and proceeded to like ask me a series oh of questions. God. All of which were like, you know, I'm a gay guy, but I think being trans is kind of weird. Why should I care about trans people? You know? And it was like, <sighs> we're eating tacos, drinking beer, and playing with dogs. I don't want to be trans right now. And right. Can I just exactly. be human? Yeah. Like, Google. Google it's, is your friend. That. And it's like, we, I guess people feel like they have the right to treat people like as like a commodity or like a toy it's like ooh something new i don't know about you're, and you're not you're not fragile you're a very it's strong hu- you're you're a very strong human being and my interaction with you you're very strong you're not first of all we all exist on this lgbtqia plus spectrum there's no reason for I, that that really upsets me that someone in our own community is like well let me you're getting treated how they would be getting treated by someone who's straight asking them well i've never um well, why don't you want to get with a girl like why like why would like that's crazy to me yeah, i'm so sorry like, you have you tried sleeping with the girl <laughs> yeah right. oh, the worst question the worst. Z, <laughs> oh my god Z, i keep people will be like well you just haven't had the right one if you have it you'll be straight and it's like that's not how that works but that's not how that works right at all. <laughs> and like also you know I have been I have been queer my entire life and dealing with my entire life. You think I haven't thought of that? Right, right. It's like, <laughs> I know right. all of that. It's like, ooh, like, that's what a new- novel idea. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so piggybacking uh, off of that, Zeke, how important do you feel it is that the black community and the queer community come together during this time? Um, I I I think it's it's so important, and if for no other reason that like the black community is part of the queer community. Um, Our movement, the gay rights movement was started by people of color, like black and brown, poor people of color who were being beat up by the police and marginalized from society and they'd fucking had it. And I see so many white queer people forgetting that fact. Um, And I think as you know, long as the government feels like it can, police our bodies and, um, you know, legislate our, our rights depending upon the formation of our bodies, the color of our skin, who we fall in love with, then like, we're all in trouble. We are all second class citizens, if that can be true. And we all, mm-hmm. like, I think, have to, you know, we have to stand in solidarity together because like really, mm-hmm. like, we're all, I, sorry, we're all yeah. in this together. I'm getting a little- We're all in this now. together. <laughs> No, I, feel, I feel it. like it, it's like I can't imagine not supporting like my brothers and sisters and then like I how can I expect anyone to support me if I don't support you you know exactly. what I'm saying and it's like I just don't know how people can like pick and choose isn't it a funny concept that we're all in the same agreement of supporting everyone but there are people who struggle with supporting you know the uh, transgender cause or the LGBT or, or L- lesbian or gay or, you know, picking different letters out of, you know, a movement to support or supporting black lives. And it's, it's very interesting how we can all be on the same accord, but no one else can. Mm-hmm. That this just really shocks me. Yeah. You know, I think it's a, a lack of education, a lack of experience and just being if you're a one who wants to fight for your rights but not others, it's just very self-centered and it's just like, it's counterproductive. Like, that's not how we move forward. Like, everybody has to help each other. We're all in this together. And, you know, yeah. united we stand, divided we fall. Like, that's just what it is. And people yeah, just have and to get on board with that. Mm-hmm. I think what we were talking about earlier is like, 
you know, if you're a gay person and you don't understand trans people, like make the same leap of, I know how straight people talk to me. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to a trans person in that exact same way. Or like, if you are a gay person and you're like, well, you know, I don't get, you know, why people need to march in the street. Like think about the straight people who talk about pride parades that way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all the same language. It's all the same dialogue. It's just the specifics are changed out. And I think that that has to point us towards, you know, systemic inequalities and realize that like, (laughs) We might think our causes are particular and different, but really they're not. We are all fighting for the same thing. That's very that. Very that. Very that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, go ahead. No. No. <laughs> all right. No, Z, I was going to ask you a question. Um, how has this whole pandemic and revolution inspired you and and what you've been doing and on your social media i know you spoke a little bit about how you um have uh, you know talking from the reality show standpoint and everything that you're doing that especially on the 26th uh speak to us a little bit more about how that's inspired you and what you've been doing in regards to that sure well i think there are there are two things um first before the pandemic i was always a bit more cautious about how i use my social media to like support causes that were important to me. And now mm-hmm. like, I don't give a fuck. I'm saying exactly what I think. I'm retweeting uh-huh. everybody that I want to retweet. I don't care if I lose followers. Like I, I, because my partner and I can't go out and protest though we would like to because we have um, uh, compromised immune systems. So like, we just can't mm-hmm. take that risk. Um, so, yeah. you know, I feel like I'm trying to do everything that I can just from my computer and like, I don't care if it gets me in trouble. I don't care if the survivor producers don't like me anymore. I don't care if I lose followers. Like, I feel like it's important to, to speak my truth. Um, And the other thing is that between getting, I think so immersed in what's happening in the real world, I often need to take a break. So it's nice to have creative fiction projects to just go and recede into. Um, So it's actually kind of been a nice catalyst for um, for my writing as well, to like just take a break from the world and go write something else, which features, you know, queer people and people of color and, you know, mm-hmm. creates a, a world where like we don't have to like be, you know, the token one, but we all just get to be the heroes in our own adventures. Oh, oh, that. That's so beautiful. That's what Darrell was saying today, actually. He was like, I think I need to start a project and I need to do yeah. something. And I was like, that is that absolutely take your mind away from this and focus it on this. That way, and you can still use your voice, you know, for the for the for the cause. Totally, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and another thing we all need to do is watch Disclosure yeah, on, on Netflix. Netflix. Which I was came just out to say. on the nineteenth. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah, congratulations. Thank yeah, you. Um, it's uh, it's very exciting. I mean, my the director Sam Fetter and um, superstar diva goddess of the world Laverne Cox who's the executive producer have been working on this for years. It's a really important um, piece of film. It talks about how trans people have been represented in television and film, um, like since the beginning of moving images and how that shaped how, what the world thinks of trans people and also what trans people think of ourselves. And um, from the beginning of the project, it has always centered the experiences of black and brown trans people in particular trans women. And I think that is like, you know, it, it really shines through. And um, I think everybody can learn something from it and watch it on Netflix. So Netflix makes more things about trans people of color. No, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I definitely just added it to the list. So there's that. You know, he literally like, just as I was added like, to the list. I looked over and I was like, what, what you doing? Because I remember, <laughs> I was like, wait, I'm pretty sure this just dropped on Netflix. Let me make sure. And I was like, yeah, it did. He, he literally added to his list. I was sitting there watching. He, it's a check mark now. Good, good. It's um, it's it's two hours well spent. You might cry a little bit, but. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm in need of a good cry good. right now, actually. Today <laughs> has actually been actually all the time now. I'm just yeah. so sensitive. I'm just like, <laughs> it, whether it's sad or it's happy, I'm crying. And I'm a cancer. It's cancer season. You know I cry at the drop of a hat anyway. So yeah. <laughs> I just need this to help me out. All right. <laughs> Thank well, you. Zeke, thank you for joining us and uh, giving us your perspective on everything. We really appreciate you joining us. Yeah. Tell us Thanks everything. Thanks for having me back. And yeah, letting absolutely. Letting me get to yeah. comment on this changing world. Right, because I feel like in the, it was like the drop of a hat. We were 
We were fighting. Everything changed. Lives. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Li- we were like, just adjusting to the pandemic, and then it was like, bloop. Also, there's revolution. It's like, yeah, it was. Right, it was like, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, we. Um, I it like, I think in LA at least the protests started on a Friday night, but they started kind of late, and I wasn't like, they weren't making headlines. And then Saturday, like. We live at 6th and Fairfax, and there was a cop car burning at 3rd and Fairfax, and we could hear, like, wow. the tear gas canisters being shot, and there were sirens. I mean, it was it was Scary. right there. Um, so, it, that re- uh, yeah. That reminds me. Are you having an issue with, like, fireworks? Oh, what the, what the hell is going on? They're popping off right, right now. now. So, I was like, yeah. let me ask oh, I'm this. sure it will be in a couple of hours. Yeah. But I think it was, like... Uh, I think it was like Saturday, Friday or Saturday night, both of them just mm-hmm. fireworks constantly. And you're All like, night. Yeah. And they're going so until like everywhere. five in the at, morning. It's been over I, here at Yonkers too last night. Um, just fireworks everywhere. And I'm just like, oh my God. Like, is it K-pop you can't fans? It. K-pop fans, right? I don't know. <laughs> because they, they, they recently have been saving our world. But what was interesting yeah. is I saw a video last night in Harlem where a lot of them have been happening and the police cars were driving through the streets and they weren't stopping. They were not. I just feel like the authorities aren't as alarmed as they would normally be because, you know, I grew up where they were like, if you pop fireworks outside of this time, you will get a ticket. Like in Texas, like they were like, yeah. you cannot pop it. Like, Allowed in city yeah. limits and stuff like that. So now I feel yeah. like they changed. I retweeted a, a, a conspiracy theory, which I believe actually, but it's like the w- w- police are actually like, orchestrating all of this and it's like they're wanting to keep like brown and black communities at un like um uh, what is it unrest un- at unrest yeah like they can't you know focus they're worried about this um like we get used to the sounds of like you know popping so that way it's like is that a gun we don't know i don't know i retweeted it but <laughs> I mean, it makes sense to me like it's not the craziest thing that could happen and it's yeah, like yeah. a lot of people are out of work and fireworks are expensive so it's like what who's buying these fireworks and, no, How, like, and these teenagers can't afford these fireworks unless they're the stealing big and that, ones. that like this, I, like the fireworks that they're doing are like <laughs> i saw one the it's other like day it was, of july <laughs> yeah but it was running down the street to, in new york you'd have to drive to pennsylvania because you can't get them in Jersey, you can't get them in New York, but in Pennsylvania, they just sell them on the side of the road. Yeah. Like, they so literally like, sell them on the side of the road. Where are y'all getting all these? Yeah. I don't get it. They only do sparklers in Harlem, and those right. aren't fire. Like, so I'm just like, what are y'all doing? Like, <laughs> it's really crazy. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> thank you again, Z, for joining us. Thank you guys for <laughs> having so me. Much. I hope we can do it again soon. And Z, again, yeah. tell people where they can find you yeah. on social media. Oh, uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Zeker Chief, which is Z E K E R C H I E F. Yeah, Zeker Chief. <laughs> and everybody, please check out Disclosure on Netflix. Yes, yes, please, please do. Yes, yes and yes. tell your friends about it. Yes, yeah. they'll do. Spread the word. Absolutely. All right, Zeke, thank you so much. Bye. Stay safe out there. Thank you, Zeke.